Welcome back to another, what are we on? JavaScript tutorial. So we are talking this time about the Word API. More specifically, we're gonna be talking about the list object inside the Word API. So specifically, normally if we have a Word document like so, and if we wanted to, we could insert a list. So if you go to insert, or no, it's this one, it's under paragraph. It's like you're inserting a bulleted list, a numbered list, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna be seeing how to work with that particular object inside of the Office API. So um, I am taking an example from the actual Scripps Lab add-in and I'm kind of just expanding on it. I thought it was a pretty decent example for the most part. And so I'm not gonna really reinvent the wheel. I'm just kind of gonna expand on it. If you wanna know where it's at, then you just go here, your little icon, samples, and then it's list, create a list. Very simple. They kind of just do a, a very general list. We're gonna kind of see how we can modify where we insert it in the location and things like that. Um, I guess some background right now, I have some functions that are kind of predefined. Obviously we have our error function. We've seen this in pretty much all the other videos. So you understand how this one works. This one right here, all it's literally doing is it's gonna clear the body first and then it's just gonna insert four different paragraphs. And so this one's gonna be the last paragraph, it's gonna insert some text, and then these ones are just gonna be the middle ones. So that's all that's doing. I did insert one extra item myself. I think visually it's just gonna be easier to see. And so I'm gonna to try to make this as big as possible, but I also wanna make sure you can kind of see the whole, I think that's fine, that's fine. And we're gonna change the font because we want something cool, not Calibri. We'll do Roboto. And then I want Roboto light. Yes, there we go. I like that one. Actually, we'll just do Roboto. Why not just keep it simple? There we go, perfect. I like that font for some reason. It's very clean. It's better than Arial. Okay, and then we're gonna have three buttons. One of them just adds the text. We're not gonna be using it, but I did wanna have it there in case you know you wanted to recreate it or something like that. So that's gonna add the text. We're gonna have one that would change the format and then insert our list. Really at this point, we're just gonna be working with the insert list. We have our HTML script that just defines the different sections of this little pane right here. So this is gonna define the upper section. This is gonna define the section that has two buttons in it. So this one's gonna be the setup one, which will run the setup function. This one will run the format function. And then this one will uh, insert the list. So pretty straightforward at this point. I think right now the only ones I have in here are just the, what is it? Just the insert function. So it's just basically the setup function. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define a new async function. We're gonna call it insert list. Put our little brackets, then our little squirrely brackets. And then we're gonna do our typical await word run. So just make sure we run everything. And then we're gonna do, it's gonna be async. Oh, I hate those spaces. No one likes the spaces. Uh, curve brackets, context. I'm not gonna go over that. I'm explaining in other videos. And then more squirrely brackets, just like that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we're gonna grab all the paragraphs in our particular, um, what is it, in our document. So first thing is grab all the paragraphs. Grab all the paragraphs. And so we're gonna declare a new variable. We'll call it paragraph, where is it? Paragraph two. I think it's like that. Otherwise, I think it's like paragraph is actually like a keyword inside it as well. So like the IntelliSense gets all a little bit confused. So I just do paragraph two. I mean, obviously you can name it whatever you want. We're gonna do context, so the runtime context. We're gonna do the document, so the current document that we're in. There is a body property, and then inside that body property, we have a paragraphs collection. And we want that paragraphs collection because that contains all of our paragraphs. We are gonna to have to load a property about this particular collection. It's called the items property. This allows us to access an individual item inside of our particular paragraph collection. So all that means is we call our, uh, we call our variable, we call the load method, and then we specify the property that we want to load. In this case, it's called items. We surround it in quotes for string, and then we do await, 
context sync. So in other words, await, basically make sure you run that line of code before you go to the next ones, because if you don't, then what's gonna happen is the rest of code won't work. So we, it's very important that you have await context sync. So await to make sure that you load the property before you go and actually try to access the property. Okay, then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically insert a list right at this paragraph, because that's technically our second paragraph. It's a little bit misleading. It's two words, but it is a paragraph in Word. So, <clears throat> um, so this one indicates new list to be started in the second paragraph. Um, I'm gonna, I think that's fine. Hopefully you guys can see, I think that's big enough. Hopefully it's big enough. Um, we're gonna say let list, so we'll just give it a, a variable and call it list. We're gonna call our paragraph two collection. We're gonna call the items property. And in this case, we are zero based. So if we want the second paragraph, we want technically one. And then there is a start new list method. So this will actually insert a new, uh, new list. Okay, and then we're gonna insert it at the start location. And so from here, we'll insert the list at the start location. Well, it's not really inserting the list, it's inserting an element that we're gonna specify in the list. So I'm gonna say my zero item at start, something like that. So it's not inserting list, Really what it's doing is it's just gonna add the item before it, that's all. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna say let my first item equal list insert paragraph, and then it's basically the string that you wanna insert. So in this case, it's my zero item at start. And then from here, if you call word, there is an insert location uh, enumerator, and you can specify before, after, and replace, and start. In this case, I want the start location, and you're good to go. And then from here, we're gonna do our await context sync. Perfect, just like that. And let's do it, perfect. So you can see that it inserted the list and then it inserted our zero item at the beginning of our list or the start of our list. Nice thing about um, the Office API, and unfortunately it's not in Excel, but you can actually do Control Z and it will actually um, go back for it, or at least it used to. Do we not have the ability? Oh, I spoke too soon. I swear I did it before, but maybe not. I don't know where I'm thinking that is then. Okay, so that's inserting the list at the start of the location. We will insert it at the end of the location. As you guessed, it's pretty much identical here. So you can really take this and, you know, just, you, you don't even really need to declare a variable at this point because you're not really going to be working with it. That's just kind of showing you that, hey, that's how you would, if you wanted to like work with a very specific element in your list, you would have to declare it as a variable. But in this case, just because I'm inserting some items and I'm not really gonna manipulate them, I'm not gonna do it for every single one. So I'm gonna say my one item at end, and then as you guessed, it is at the end. And then I'm gonna show you another little trick too. So you can actually specify the list item level. So if you go to list item, there is a level property and that basically tells you how far you want it indented. So you know how like if you go here, you can do like a, uh, an indented one and if you it's like it's like if you press tab basically so if you press tab on it This is basically indenting it. So if I run this one, let's see what we get So you notice how this one's like a little bit more indented That's all it means so you're basically defining that level here um, So again you insert it you call the list item and then you call the level property and then you specify how deep you want it inside so insert at the end inserts at the end of our list. Okay, and then from here we will insert um, at before. So insert at before location. And then from here we'll do list insert paragraph my two item at before. 
and then it's word insert location and then before and let me show you what that one does oh i need to capitalize that or else that ain't gonna work so I did want to specify with this one, it's a little bit misleading. You would think, oh, that's going to be part of our list. It is not part of our list. It's actually before our list. So before and after are basically like inserting paragraphs that are actually before that particular list. So again, a little bit misleading, but it, it's not super confusing once you do it once or twice. So just keep in mind before and after will not be part of our list. And I'll make a note of that too in our notes. So insert, ah, I love the IntelliSense, but sometimes it pops up when I don't want it to. But that's like a lot of good things, you know. It doesn't always work, but as long as it works most of the time, I'm happy. Okay, three, and again, just making a little note to yourself, not part of our list. Again, not part of our list. Okay. So now that we've done that, let's run it one final time and then we'll go on to formatting our list. So we'll insert our list. So you can tell here, we now have three items and then we have an item before and an item after. Oh, and I didn't change it, but you guys kind of understand what it's supposed to be. So I'll trust you on that one. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go and move on to another one. I'm gonna put a little semicolon there just to close that one off. Okay, now we'll do another async function. This one is gonna be called format list. And then we'll put our little squirrely brackets. And then from here, it's gonna be await word run async and then curve brackets, I don't know. I never knew what to call those in school to be honest. <laughs> I, I call them just a little bit of everything, I feel like. Okay, and then from this one. So what are we gonna do here? Well, let's first grab the list collection because now inside of our particular, um, what is it, inside our particular document, there is a list collection. Now, I'm gonna cheat a little bit in sense that I now know there's only one item in my collection, so if I grab it, it's always gonna return, you know, particular, well, it doesn't necessarily return it, but you'll see that we don't have to do like the items, you know, property or anything like that. There's actually a built-in method we could use. So first thing we'll do is we'll grab the list collection, grab the list collection. And again, we'll store it in a variable just to be safe. We'll call it word list that equals context, document, body. And then there is a list collection. And then we'll grab the first list in this case, it's the only list <laughs> and we'll say let first list equal word list get first. And there's also that kind of cool thing to get first or null object. So this is kind of like that little fail safe where it's like you're not entirely sure if there is a list. If there's not a list, you don't want to necessarily stop the program from running. So what this one will do is say, hey, if there's nothing there, I'm just going to return a null to you. That I honestly like a lot because a lot of times if you're working with like a, you know, a coworker's workbook or something like that, you don't necessarily know if they're going to have certain items in there. And so uh, this is kind of protects you from having your code like all freak out or something like that. And so something we might want to do is, you know, set the bullet design for a particular level. So we'll set the bullet design for the first level. Again, we are zero based. Keep that in mind. First list set level bullet we can specify and if you even look here it says level and then um what is it character code no it's a font name something like that so it's zero and then i'm going to say diamonds just like that and then i'm going to put my little that one and then i'm going to copy this so i can run it really quick and let's see what we get bam See how it changed it to a little diamond? So when it changes the bullet, it's actually like changing the little bullet design right there. All right, so from there, let's go and set the level indent, for example. So uh, the indent level for the first level 
250 points. Did, what did, was I writing? 20 points for images. Okay. Um, you got to love when I... Sometimes I look back at my notes and I'm like, what was I writing? Because <laughs> sometimes I look at it and I'm just like, I'm like, what were you thinking at that point in time? Okay, so we're going to set the level indents. And you can see here, there's level, text indent, bullet number, picture indent. So actually, you will have a different indent depending on if it's an image or not. So in this case, I want level zero to be 50 points for just regular text and then 20 points for images. Unfortunately, I don't have any images with me, so I apologize for not having that, but just know that's basically what it's doing. Um, and really, I think that's pretty much good for that one. Let me change the format again. See how it kind of uh, indents a little bit more. I got to remember, there's like diamonds, bullets, and, and something else too. I, I guess what I could do, I could see if there's like, sometimes like they have like list bullets. See, there it is. So what is it, diamonds, hollow? square. So this is just, again, another way of doing it. I'm not positive this is going to work. You would think like the intuitive was like, oh, well, you just, you know, you do that and it works perfectly. So that's another way to do as well. So you can either pass through the string or you can use the enumeration. Personally, if I was doing this, I would use this method because I never remember like string names and stuff like that. This one, I can just do control J and it will just like pop everything up for me. Or um, if, you know, if I just kind of back it out. So hey, maybe I want like hollow, for example. You know, you can change the format. This is another way to do it. So just again, options for you. you don't necessarily have to do it that way. You can do the other way, but I think that's a little bit more reliable. But um, with that being said, that actually finishes the video. There's really, I mean, there's not really a lot you can do with lists. I mean, you're just inserting and you know removing items for the most part. Um, I guess you could, let me see, let, let me see if they have it here. I can, I can check here. My, my first item, uh, where is it? Oh yeah, they have it. So there's like a delete too, so you can delete it as well. So if I, you can kind of tell, well. It did it, but then it didn't do it, right? <laughs> because technically there should be two, right? So if it's the first one is zero, if I insert it, you see how it kind of deletes it. So that's how you, again, like if you wanted to delete an item as well. Most of them are pretty intuitive. I feel like, it, you know, if you look at it, it's it's not too confusing. But again, there's, there's really not you're going to necessarily do with a particular like list item. Um, but you can tell like, you know, hey, maybe you want to get the range, the text range. Obviously, if we're going to do like more, I would say, like complicated stuff. Then there can be some stuff that we might need to do. But I mean, you can obviously do some stuff like, you know, HTML, you know, list item, list item or null object, you know, line unit before. There's a lot with Word that we've got to explore to say the least. But I'll keep that one up there just so people can see it. And so I'll make my little note. Delete the first item in our list. Perfect. All right. But yeah, so that kind of concludes our video. So if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. I'll make sure to upload the code as well. Um, and then also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos because we got some cool stuff coming up. Definitely more with the API stuff related to Word. Um, I started some of the Excel function ones. I was gonna record it today, but then of course, me and my all my research, I came across a little, uh, what is it, like documentation thing. I was like, oh, that seems really cool. And it of course opened up a whole can of worms. And now I'm trying to get some other stuff to work and I wanna make sure it works before obviously I start recording on it. So thank you again for watching everybody. We will see you in the next video.